do some graphical analysis now. We'll put our labels on our ADIS diagram over here, including the price level and the real GDP. I'm going to draw a long run aggregate supply curve, which you would have learned about in an earlier lesson by this point. The long run aggregate supply curve is vertical at a nation's full employment level of output. I'm going to draw a short run aggregate supply curve, which is horizontal below full employment and vertical beyond full employment. This represents the Keynesian view of the economy, which you've probably learned in earlier lessons as well. Finally, I'll draw my aggregate demand curve. I'm going to assume that this economy is currently at equilibrium at its full employment level with inflation represented by PLE. So let's talk about the level of unemployment that it exists when a nation is at full employment. When a nation is at full employment, it is experiencing structural plus frictional unemployment. These together represent what we call the natural types of unemployment. Even a healthy economy producing at its full employment level is expected to have some natural unemployment. And the rate of unemployment that prevails when an economy is producing at its full employment level is called the natural rate of unemployment. So corresponding with the full employment level of income, we have structural and frictional unemployment. However, what happens if a nation experiences a demand deficient recession? Let's show what happens if aggregate demand falls in a nation due to a fall in either consumption, investment, net exports, maybe an increase in taxes or a decrease in government spending. We'll see 80 fall to 81. Now, in previous lessons, you learned that in the short run, wages are sticky or inflexible. For this reason, there will be very little deflation, maybe only disinflation. The price level will fall to PL1, but there will be a relatively large increase in unemployment and a decrease in the level of output. So we'll see output fall to Y1, and we have what's called a recessionary gap, which is the difference between a nation's equilibrium output when it is in a recession and its full employment output. So how does this affect unemployment in the country? So the economy is already experiencing structural and frictional unemployment when it was producing at YFE, but now due to a fall in aggregate demand, we have cyclical unemployment on top of the natural unemployment that already existed. The unemployment rate has now risen to a level higher than the natural rate of unemployment. Workers have lost their jobs due to the sticky and inflexible nature of wages. Firms have had to lay off workers to reduce their costs and respond to falling demand for their goods. Let's look at the other scenario now. What if aggregate demand were to increase to a level beyond full employment? Is it possible for unemployment to actually fall when an economy is already producing at its full employment level? So assume AD shifts out to AD2 due to either an increase in consumption, uh, investment, maybe an increase in net exports, or poor fiscal policy, such as a decrease in taxes or an increase in government spending. Due to the inflexible nature of wages, firms are going to hire more workers, and the unemployment rate will actually fall below the natural rate of unemployment. So at Y2, we have what's called an inflationary gap. That's the difference between Y2, which is an output level beyond the full employment level, and YFE. So we can call this an inflationary gap. And what happens to the unemployment rate? Well, because at full employment we have the natural rate, and now we have something less than the natural rate, we can say that the unemployment rate is less than the natural rate of unemployment. How is this possible? Keep in mind that the natural rate includes frictional and structural unemployment. So there, is, so there are some workers who are looking for jobs who are unable to find them when the economy was at full employment. Firms will go out and hire as many of those workers as possible, reducing both the structural and frictional rates of unemployment. And the economy is now producing beyond its full employment level at an unemployment rate that is lower than the natural rate. So is this a good thing? Is reducing unemployment below the natural rate desirable? We know it's possible, but is it desirable? To answer that, we can go back to our theory of the short run versus the long run in the aggregate demand, aggregate supply model. As we discussed in a previous lesson, if a nation's output is beyond its full employment level, that economy is overheating and it's likely that wages will be driven up, causing output to fall back to the full employment level. 
So far in this lesson, we've defined unemployment, we've distinguished between the different types of unemployment an economy might experience, we've identified some of the causes of unemployment, and we've shown how you can graph the different types of unemployment in an ADAS model. In our next video, we'll talk about some of the solutions to unemployment that a government or a central bank might impose to try to reduce the levels of frictional, structural, and cyclical unemployment. Mm -hmm.